Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I've got you the solution to the DAX problem that I asked you about two weeks ago, which is where you had to count the number of stints for all the employees. Now, if you tried it, but if you couldn't get to the solution, this is the video that you would want to watch until the end. Before we actually jump into the solution, let's just quickly recap the problem and let's just start it from there. All right, I'm in this Excel file that contains three columns of data. Very simple. Let me just take one minute to quickly recap the problem. Now, this data, employee code, date, and the role, we had to find out the number of stints that the employee served in the entire duration of the data. What do I mean by a stint? A stint simply means an unbroken period of time when the employee held on to one particular role. Let's just take a look at the data. So if I take a look at the month of Feb and the month of Jan, this was stint number one for that employee. The stint got broken in the month of March and he started again as a branch manager, which continued for quite a while. And the stint again got broken in the month of September. Then he started as a team supervisor. This is the third stint. Now, a lot of people did confuse the counting of the stints with the unique uh, count of the particular role column, which is not right because if you are currently serving as a zonal manager, then you become a branch manager, which is stint number two, you can again perhaps be a zonal manager once again in the future. And if you're doing a distinct count, these two stints of zonal manager would then be counted as one, which is not going to be the right answer. So you had to count the number of stints for every single employee. Now, if you think about the way that we would approach the solution, there could be a lot of ways to solve it. But one way that I think that we could approach the solution is this. At every single row of this particular data, I have to take a look at the previous month and find out that am I continuing the same role or have I broken the stint and have, am, I'm into a new role as of now. So take a look at this particular uh, data set right here. I'm in the month of Feb and I'm going to go take a look at the immediate previous month and find out that am I still a zonal manager? If I'm still a zonal manager, the stint is continuing. If I have broken that stint, that means it's a new start of the stint. So here you can see that this was stint number one. And if I move to the next row, if I look back to the previous month, the branch manager and zonal manager do not meet. That's a new stint. And I'm going to mark this as number two. That means this is the starting of the second stint. And then once I have all the markings across in this particular table, I can just count the number of markings that I have done. And this is going to be the number of stints that the employee has served. Now that you have probably understood what the logic is, let's just see a couple of ways to solve this uh, in Power BI. There are two solutions that I have built. One solution that I have actually taken it from the uh, participant who participated in this challenge. And let's just take a look at all the three solutions that I'm presenting today. All right, I'm in Power BI and I have loaded the data. Let me show you my first attempt at creating a measure to be able to solve this problem. I'm sure it can be optimized further, but that was my first attempt. So here is my stint method one. Like the way that I explained you in Excel, uh, that I need to find the ability to go take a look at the immediate previous month and go find out what the role was in that month and compare that role with the current month. If the role was different, I mark it as one. If the role was same, I continue to just actually do my calculation. So here in the filter function, what I try to do is I try to take a look at the immediate previous month or I just try to find out that. And once I'm able to find out that, I take a look at the role and I compare it with the current role. If the role is not matching what on the previous role of the previous month is not matching with the role of the current month, then I just multiply that with one. And then I just eventually sum all the ones and then I actually get my answer. Now, if you're familiar with um, all of this top end and uh, all these calculations, I'm sure you can actually make sense of it. But that was my first attempt at solving this using a measure. I also found another way of solving this using a data modeling technique, which I'm going to discuss the next. All right, let me just take you through the second solution that I have built. This is more of a data modeling solution more than a DAX solution. Now, in my previous measure that I created, which was uh, not really relying on the data being sorted in any particular order, I was using some DAX techniques to be able to get to the immediate previous month's role and then doing all my calculations from there on. This particular approach, uh, might be faster in terms of uh, speed of the DAX calculation, but it does rely on Power Query to be able to sort the data in the correct order and then the data lands into Power BI. I'm going to take you through all the transformations that I have done on the data in Power Query and let's just actually take it from there. All right, I'm in Power Query and that's where I have uh, done some data transformations before I load the data into Power Query. Note that I'm not really anymore working with one particular data set. I am now working with two data sets. I've replicated the data one more time to be able to make the process of referring to the previous row far easier. Please take a look. 
So here is the first data. It's the same data that I have loaded twice. So in this particular data, the only thing that you should be interested in to take a look at is the sorting of the rows. While I'm loading the data, I actually sort the rows, which is the employee code, and then sorted by the date in the ascending order before I load the data. The sorting might take a while for Power Query to process, but I'm just trying to speed up my DAX calculation. After I sort the rows by the employee code and then by the date, I then add an index column, which actually starts with zero. These are the two things that I have done in data set number one. Let's just take a look at the same data, which I've called it at data set number two. Let's just take a look at what have I done. Same steps, uh, again, sorted by the employee code, sorted by the date. And the additional thing that I have done, which is different from the first data set, is that I have added an index that actually starts with one, not with zero. All right. Now let's just take a look at how this is actually going to help me. Consider this particular row, which is the month of Feb. You can see that it's marked as one, and this is the month of Feb. Now, if I'm trying to do a VLOOKUP and I'm trying to find out that what the role was in the previous month, I should be able to do that very easily because I'm just going to try to find the value one and the value one is going to be found in the second table in the first row against in the month of Jan. So you can see that value one is right here and it is the month of Jan right here. All that I have to do is apply a bit of control to be able to find the value for the current employee and I should have actually solved the problem. I'm going to load these two data sets into Power BI, create a simple relationship, and we'll take it from there. All right, the two data sets have been loaded, and what I have done is I have connected these two with the index column, a one-to-one -one relationship, very straightforward. Now that I have the ability to do a very simple related or a VLOOKUP function, I can do a measure very, very simply. So if we actually take a look at stint method number two, all that I'm trying to do is write some very simple VLOOKUP to find if the employee was same or not, and then find if the role was same or not. And then I just run that logic and I just do a sum of uh, the data table against all the rows of the data. And this actually gives me the same answer as I have received it before, but I'm assuming that this measure is going to be a lot more faster rather than the previous measure that I created. All right, finally, I'd like to discuss a participant solution. His name is Pat, and he brought out a very brilliant and a very nifty solution to the problem. Please take a look at his measure. What he has done is he's assuming that all the dates that we have will be at the start of the month. And if the date is actually at the start of the month, he's just using an edate function to actually push the date to the previous month. Once the date has been pushed to the previous month, he applies two very simple filters. Filter number one is for the employee. That means I'm only taking a look at a particular employee's records, that's one. And I'm actually taking a look at not the record of all the months, but only the previous month. So these are the two filters that he's applied. He's just finding the max of the role and he's doing a very simple logical check within the SumX function to find that which roles have been changed. And that's about it. Once you actually run this particular measure and you drag this in the pivot table, this also gives me the same answer as all the other solutions. So brilliant work, Pat. All right, that was the solution to the DAX challenge. I suggest that you also take a look at the blog and the YouTube comments. You're going to find a lot of interesting ways that people have attempted to solve this particular problem. Just by taking a look at the ways that people have approached this problem is going to give you a lot of perspective to approach problems in Power BI. In the end, like the way that we always do it, a big shout out to everybody who participated in this particular challenge. Thank you so much for spending time on this. Quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you are starting out with Power BI. And learning Power BI is hard, learning DAX is hard, learning Power Query is hard. I suggest that you take a look at my courses. It's gonna give you a lot of fundamental level understanding of Power Query and DAX and take you up from there to build up more intense skills of solving more complex problems. Thanks so much for spending time with me and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye.